Hello, I'm community historian Joan Fadawa, and I'm coming to you today from the Scottsdale Heritage Connection Messenger Family Research Center at the Scottsdale Civic Center Library. I bet, like me, you've spent hours and hours during our COVID-19 stay-at-home uh, period watching movies whether, or looking at a screen, whether you've been watching a movie or something, a YouTube uh, show on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your computer screen, on your TV screen, whether we're streaming movies or whatever. But there's nothing like going to the movies. Uh, and this means that we probably are all uh, impacted by a bit of movie mania lately. So I thought it would be a great time to think about our movie and TV history. In other words, what has been shot on location here in Scottsdale, both uh, movies and also TV shows, and news programs, maybe even some advertisements, and also to uh, remember some uh, bits of nostalgia on Scottsdale's movie theater history. History, those places that maybe were a date night for us or a favorite family outing. I confess that uh, I'm waxing a bit nostalgic these days about some of this because I'm so eager to be able to uh, don my mask and go to a real movie theater again. But in the meantime, I will continue to really enjoy uh, watching uh, old movies and new movies or TV shows on my screen at home. So settle down, grab some popcorn, and let's uh, look at some movie mania of Scottsdale, Arizona. Our, uh, our movie uh, history dates back to about 1919 when we first saw some movies here in Scottsdale. We had only recently had electric service in Scottsdale and so by 1919 we were able to then use uh, the old projection system of the silent movies which were also called the flickers and these first silent movies were shown at the Johnny Rose Pool Hall which which was at the corner of what we now know as Brown and Main Street. And uh, although the building has been replaced, it's now uh, the home of Mexican imports. But if you can just put that location in your mind, that was uh, where we saw an occasional silent movie, although it was more known as being a pool hall at the time. Uh, we also then had the opportunity to go into downtown Phoenix to some of the really lush and lavish uh, theaters that were there. The Rialto that had opened in 1921, the Orpheum that opened in 1929, and the Fox in 1931. And this was worth a long drive around, along dusty roads into downtown Phoenix because it was really a movie experience. These were single screen movie theaters that were very ornately designed and decorated and we saw uh, uh, some of the really early pre-World War II movies. I might mention that the very first movie that was actually filmed in Arizona was called Robber's Roost. It was filmed in Sedona in 1923, and it was based on a novel written by Zane Gray, who, by the way, did have a Scottsdale connection. He had family located here in Scottsdale and uh, visited several times in the 1910s and 1920s, and uh, also took at least two Scottsdale-based artists uh, Marjorie Thomas and, uh, and Lillian Wilhelm Smith along on some of his adventures. We also have become quite a mecca for movie stars that want to get away from Hollywood. And the first known movie star that used to come uh, for some R&R &R here in Scottsdale uh, to visit his brother was the uh, movie star named Henry Walthall. And he was a silent movie star, uh, best known for his role in Griffith's The Birth of a Nation, but also starred in an early production of The Tale of Two cities. Uh, but again, although he may have been one of the first, he has uh, over the decades uh, been followed by many movie stars that find the laid-back uh, atmosphere of Scottsdale and the lack of paparazzi 
here very welcoming when they want to get away from Hollywood. One of the first big movies that was filmed here, and for good reason, was called The Thunderbirds. And why was this filmed here? Well, in nine, in, uh, at the beginning of World War II, uh, there, were, there was a huge need for training pilots all over the country. And so the federal government offered the opportunity for private companies to start pilot training, basic pilot training uh, in various parts of the country. And Arizona had perfect weather for it. So a group from Hollywood decided to invest in pilot training bases here in the greater Phoenix area and they were called uh, Thunderbird Fields. Thunderbird Field uh, 1 opened in Glendale in 1941. Falcon Field uh, opened in Mesa uh, the following year and in June of 1942 Thunderbird 2 Airfield opened north of Scottsdale. Now it's Scottsdale Airport and Air Park. But because it was owned and operated by a group from Hollywood, it seemed only natural that they would want to film a movie here that was one of those real patriotic World War II movies. And it was about uh, aviation cadets learning how to fly um, at bases in the Phoenix area. And so on location, um, in 1942, we had the stars Gene Tierney, uh, the female lead and the two male leads were Preston Foster and John Sutton and while they were here uh, they not only filmed at the airfields in Scottsdale and Glendale and Mesa, but they also filmed in the Red Cross Canteen in downtown Phoenix and around the valley, particularly at a ranch near Red Mountain, which you can certainly see distinctively in the background. Uh, they uh, not only filmed the film here, uh, produced by Daryl Zanuck, but they also brought a whole uh, steady stream of movie stars here to entertain the cadets while they were going through training. Leland Hayward, who is a leading producer in Hollywood, was the actual chairman of the board of the Thunderbird Fields um, owned company called Southwest Airways. And John Swope, who had been an assistant to Leland Hayward, was the actual field manager. Interesting, not only was John Swope the field manager here at uh, Thunderbird 2 Airfield here in Scottsdale, but he was married to the movie star Dorothy McGuire and they lived during the time of uh, World War II training base uh, at Scottsdale um, in the cattle track area near Scottsdale Road and McDonald and they entertained many Hollywood celebrities at their home while they were living here. So remember the Thunderbirds, it's a great movie and really gives you a, a flavor for what uh, the location Scottsdale and Phoenix looked like during during World War II. Well, as I mentioned, to go to see a movie up through World War II, you had to go into downtown Phoenix. But finally, after World War II, when many people were moving to Scottsdale and beginning uh, to also have a lot more tourist uh, trade here in Scottsdale, we finally got our own movie theater. And that was opened in 1948 on Main Street by merchant Malcolm White. Uh, it was called the Tea Bar Tea, named through a contest of the, that locals participated in and won by Mrs. Frank Cavalier, who decided that because we were named the Westmost Western Town, again, the slogan coined by Malcolm White, uh, that it would only be fitting to have the, our movie theater with a ranch type name, T Bar T. Uh, it was the state-of-the-art movie theater at the time on the south side of Main Street between Scottsdale Road and Brown Avenue. It had a smoke bar. It had a crying room for babies. Uh, it was had the latest in sound equipment. This was the ad that ran in the Scottsdale Progress on op for the opening. Um, on Thursdays, it showed Spanish language movies uh, for the benefit of the many uh, Spanish-speaking uh, uh, residents of Scottsdale. 
and get this in 1948 when it opened uh, to see a first run movie the adult ticket price was 50 cents and children were 14 cents now why it was an odd number like that I don't know maybe they had a lot of pennies but anyway children were 14 cents to get in um, one interesting story I heard from a man who was in high school at the time in the late 1940s, early 1950s, is that Malcolm White had hired uh, Mel Jones to actually change the wording on the marquee uh, to, you know, to show what time the movies were and what the feature run was. And Mel said many times he was awoken late at night by Malcolm White, who said that um, after the movie theater closed, and after uh, probably after 11 o'clock or midnight uh, some high school kids would go and get a ladder and climb up and change the marquee to put uh, who knows what <laughs> spelled out on the marquee and Mel would have to get out of bed and go and change the sign interestingly and a little bit ashamedly years later after Malcolm White sold the theater and it had been renamed the Kiva it became an adult theater and was an adult theater for many years there on Main Street and right across the street was another adult theater called the Portofino so right here on Main Street in downtown Scottsdale we had two adult movie theaters which w had caused a bit of consternation among those uh, who weren't keen to have that kind of thing right there in downtown Scottsdale. So Malcolm White also gave uh, teenagers and families another great movie opportunity in Scottsdale when he opened the Roundup Drive-In Movie Theater on Thomas Road and about 65th Street in 1955. The Roundup was great uh, entertainment. Um, they uh, often uh, showed first run movies. The very first movie to show there was You're Never Too Young starring Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. And I might mention that Dean Martin had a bit of a, a local connection too. He was often a player in the Pro-Am at the Phoenix Open Golf Tournament and often stayed at the Camelback Inn. Uh, the drive-in, uh, the roundup, closed in about 1979 and then was redeveloped that particular area for many years in the 80s through the early 2000s was the headquarters for Paddock Pools and now it's an apartment complex. But many adults who grow up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, I'm sure when they drive on that part of Thomas Road, have a lot of nostalgia of teenage parties at the drive-in movie theater or uh, dressing up in their PJs as little kids in the family station wagon and going to the roundup. I also might mention there was another drive-in on uh, McKellips and, uh, and Pima Road on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community, the Scottsdale Six, and that lasted all the way through 2011 and was the last drive-in that actually operated here in the Scottsdale area. But since then, many of our resorts have dive-in movies at their pools uh, during the summer, and just recently during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, several retail establishments and I believe even Salt River Fields have have started drive-in movies in their parking lots and uh, and whatnot so that people can still go to movies uh, but still keep their social distance so let's get back to some of the movies and TV shows that were filmed here. Perhaps some of you will remember that we actually had a working movie studio called Cootia City, uh, located just west of Scottsdale. Uh, Cootia City is a movie studio opened in the late 1930s by an Italian immigrant named, I love this name, Salvador Pace Budanza Cudia. And he uh, had many Hollywood connections, but he figured that this was a great place to offer a sound studio for uh, Western movies. Four Westerns were produced uh, from the late 1930s through the beginning of World War II. Then uh, the movie studio closed and it became kind of a canteen and entertainment social center for uh, service people, uh, men and women, during World War II. But after 
after World War II, uh, Mr. Kudia opened it up again and filmed uh, a number of westerns there. And then they filmed three seasons of a locally produced uh, show that was featured in a TV magazine at the time from 1957 to 1959. A show called 26 Men uh, was filmed there. It, it lasted three years on television. It starred Tris Coffin and it uh, employed many local extras. In fact, Janie Ellis, long time, or a Scottsdale native who runs Cattle Track Art Colony, uh, was a dance hall girl extra in, uh, in the, one of the seasons of 26 Men. But unfortunately, with that location uh, on Camelback Road and about 40th Street, was very close to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. And as the air traffic got more and more, it was very difficult to film anything outside. So the movie theater cl or the movie studio closed. But for several years after that, Kudia City continued to operate as a teen center. Back to a favorite movie houses uh, near Scottsdale. Uh, the Kachina Theater incorporated new technology when it opened on Scottsdale Road, close to where the Galleria is now. Uh, in 1960, Henry Nace opened it, and it featured the new technology widescreen Cinerama. Maybe some of you old-timers like me will remember going to Cinerama. It was a big deal then. And about two years after the Kachina opened, it had a big benefit. Um, it premiered the movie Hatari that starred John Wayne and it was about a safari and it was a benefit for the brand new Phoenix Zoo that was opening that same year. So John Wayne came into town. They had a pre-movie uh, dinner and reception at Trader Vic's on Fifth Avenue and then the, the group uh, attending the benefit moved over to the Kachina Theater. I might mention for those of you who like classic movies, the very first show at the Kachina was Butterfield 8 that starred Liz Taylor and Eddie Fisher. And the very last show before it closed in 1989 was The Wizard of Oz. By that time, the Kachina had become a Harkins Theater and uh, it was, again, still a favorite place for date night. It was also, again, a cutting edge theater. In fact, it was featured in a national carpeting ad because of the plush carpeting that had been installed there. Many people still miss the Kachina Theater. So let's talk about some more movies. Although Psycho was filmed in downtown Phoenix, uh, its leading star, Janet Lee and her then husband Tony Curtis actually stayed in Scottsdale uh, at the Hotel Valley Ho and uh, they were frequently seen around Scottsdale but when Psycho actually premiered I love this this was a little blurb that was on the front page of the Scottsdale Progress and it says note to parents and teachers we strongly advise you not permitting youngsters to see Alfred Hitchcock's motion picture or psycho. It is so ghastly it would turn the stomach of a case-hardened U.S. Marine. <laughs> so I'm sure that's going to make you want to rush out and get, uh, get psycho and watch it again. Uh, another movie that was filmed here uh, in 1971 took advantage of a recently closed group of uh, Native American Hogans that had been located on the uh, McCormick's ranch. Uh, Mrs. Uh, McCormick had been a very big patron of Native American arts and had built a little Native American arts and crafts studio at Via de Ventura in Pima, kind of where the post office is now. But when the McCormicks uh, sold the ranch after Mrs. McCormick passed away, uh, the Hogans were used uh, as a movie set for a movie that starred uh, Bill Cosby as Caleb Reavers, uh, and the movie was called Man and Boy. After 
after the movie was filmed there in those Hogans, a part of the movie set. It was also uh, shot um, some indoor scenes at the Carefree Studios, which I'll talk about in just a moment. After the movie was over, one of those Hogans was uh, relocated to the uh, McCormick Stillman Railroad Park, which was under development at the time, and uh, was along the train route at the McCormick Stillman Railroad Park until eventually its uh, adobe structure kind of disintegrated and was no longer safe to have at the railroad park in about 2008. But that was definitely one of the location uh, sets at Scottsdale. So one that uh, many of you will remember was the movie Raising Arizona, which was filmed here in 1986. It was a quirky uh, Kane Brothers movie, uh, and it starred Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter, also John Goodman. It uh, featured, uh, well, the plot featured a kidnapped baby Arizona, who was allegedly the son of a local businessman. And some of the locations in Scottsdale included Riata Pass as a backdrop, but also the home that they uh, kept the ba a kid a kidnapped a baby in was actually a house that was located where the Four Seasons Resort is now. It was called Crescent Ranch and it had been a private home, uh, but was vacated at that particular time in 86 when the movie was being filmed. But here's an interesting sidelight, is that they were advertising in local papers the opportunity to have your baby have a screen test so that it could be one of a rotation of babies that could play the kidnapped uh, star in the movie. Uh, don't know if any of those babies are still around in Scottsdale today or if any of them made the cut, but that was a, 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 an ad right out of a local paper. It premiered in March of 1987, and Raising Arizona was shown at that premiere at the United Artists Five Cinemas, which is now uh, the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art. Some say it wasn't a particularly flattering view of Scottsdale, Tempe, or Arizona in general, but it was a kind of a quirky cult film. A few other films that were uh, shot here in Scottsdale uh, were uh, in 1985, just one of the guys was, uh, I love this description, in the Arizona Republic. It was called a locker room romp without the odor or itch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, uh, it was shot at Coronado High School, Arcadia area, at Scottsdale High, and also at Big Surf in Tempe. And I might mention that it was one of at least four films that were shot on location at Coronado High School, the others being Not Quite Human, Just Perfect, and a real classic, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure that was filmed at Coronado in uh, 1988-1989. That was considered uh, a fantasy teen film starring uh, Kuno Reeves and Alex Winter. You know, if I'm not saying some of these names right, you can tell I'm not into the movie star pronunciations as much as I am the movies themselves, so I apologize if I'm not saying those right. But it was, uh, like I said, it was filmed uh, at Ted and Bill's Excellent Adventure at Coronado. Also, some scenes at the Scottsdale Police Station on Second Street at the time, and again at Carefree Studios in North Scottsdale. So many kids got to be extras in the, at the Coronado filming that in February 2019, they had a 30-year reunion of all of the students that were there at Coronado High School during the filming, and uh, that was uh, quite a fun time uh, to re reminisce about uh, that filming at, Scott, at uh, Coronado High School. And another film that was uh, shot on location here in 1994-1995 uh, was Waiting to Exhale, starring Whitney Houston, Angela Bassett, and Dennis Haysbert. Uh, the Hermosa Inn was one of the uh, locations, as well as Scottsdale's Northern Desert, and a house in the Troon area of Scottsdale uh, were all featured in Waiting to Exhale.
So now let me talk a little bit about that uh, movie and TV studio known by three different names, Graham Studios, Carefree Studios, or Southwestern Studios, which is about where the Summit Shopping Center is just in the, um, the, on the border between Carefree and Scottsdale. One of the first big uses after it opened in 1968 was the filming of the Dick Van Dyke Show uh, that was the one not with Mary Tyler Moore, but he starred uh, with Hope Lang, and that was a TV series uh, in 1971 to 1974. Uh, it was actually portraying Dick Van Dyke as a Phoenix area radio, or excuse me, television talk show host. Uh, so it was kind of true to his character. And during the time that Dick Van Dyke uh, did that filming, uh, his parents lived here, and he himself, Dick Van Dyke, had a ranch in the Cave, Cave Creek and Carefree area. He was also a very popular uh, honorary figure around town. He uh, was the honorary chair of a capital campaign for then Scottsdale Memorial Hospital. He was a grand marshal of the Parada del Sol parade. And a few years earlier, before he starred in that uh, series uh, in the 70s, but during the 1960s, uh, when we had a wax museum um, on Stetson Drive uh, in downtown Scottsdale, uh, his character in Mary Poppins as the chimney sweep was one of the featured characters in the wax museum in downtown Scottsdale. So there were many other TV shows that were featured here or included um, in location shots here in Scottsdale. There was an episode of the FBI a series that starred Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. that was shot at the Scottsdale Air Park, uh, Airport in 1973. And during that time, uh, Zimbalist stayed at the Sunburst Resort. And I understand that uh, the coffee shop and the bar were filled at the end of the day because people wanted to watch him putt on the little golf, uh, putt, golf uh, putting green that was behind the resort. In the 1980s, David Letterman, when he was a star of NBC's Late Night Show, uh, used Scottsdale as its home office. And one time, uh, he had then Mayor Herb Drinkwater call in and read the top 10 list from the Scottsdale home office. Uh, there was also a very short-lived series, I think there were two episodes, during the summer of 2006 called the Tuesday Night Book Club that, was, uh, that featured Scottsdale. And I, I understand from a uh, fellow historian and longtime resident Paul Messenger that in the 1960s there was an episode of Alan Funt's Candid Camera filmed at a Scottsdale barber shop. Not really sure what the plot was about that, but how fun that we were on candid camera. Many of you will remember back in the 1960s uh, the TV series Hogan's Heroes uh, starring Bob Crane. Now the series itself had nothing to do with Scottsdale, but after the series ended in 1971, its star, Bob Crane, started uh, performing on the dinner theater circuit. And in the summer of uh, 1978, he was starring in a show called Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Dinner Theater at the corner of Shea and Scottsdale Road. Regrettably, during the time that he was starring in that, he was found murdered in his uh, rented Scottsdale apartment. Apartment. And that uh, was a, a long time unsolved mystery here in Scottsdale. Uh, several years, about a dozen years ago, uh, there was a Hollywood movie called Autofocus uh, starring Greg Kinnear that actually uh, talked about Crane's life and death. And so in some uh, tangential way, Scottsdale was featured um, in that movie. As I mentioned earlier, we've also been the set for ads, commercials, uh, news, and documentaries. 
we were the first municipality in the entire uh, U.S. to have a mechanized arm garbage collection truck. And that was so unusual when it premiered in 1969 that the truck was called Godzilla. And that generated a lot of news features as well as a documentary uh, about our mechanized arm garbage truck, Godzilla. Uh, both General Electric and Procter and Gamble did commercials here. In fact, Oxidol filmed a commercial in front of the Little Red Schoolhouse where they had a couple of washing machines set up and members of the then Chamber of Commerce that was located in the Little Red Schoolhouse were actually showing how the difference between Oxidol and Brand X cleaned the clothes when it came out of the, the washing machine. Uh, the chamber itself uh, produced a movie that was sent through out the United States to travel agents. It was called Hygera and it featured uh, the many different tourist attractions in Scottsdale. 60 Minutes and Mike Wallace came to Scottsdale in the 1970s and interviewed uh, our then mayor Bill Jenkins and also the head of our contracted rural metro fire department and some say it was one of the most positive pieces ever aired on 60 Minutes which usually was kind of an expose about uh, somebody that wasn't uh, doing uh, well but ours was a glowing report about how successful Scottsdale and its uh, contract fire uh, department was at the time. Uh, we've also been the subject again of another positive piece in 1995 NBC News filmed how uh, during a time when uh, passing taxes wasn't a popular measure that we were going to vote on increasing our sales tax in order to fund a, a planned McDowell Sonoran Preserve and we all know how successful that was and also in the 1990s uh, Desert Mountain Golf Course hosted an outdoor production of Live with Regis and Kathy Lee that also featured the Phoenix uh, Suns Gorilla. And we've been the subject of several reality TV shows. Gordon Ramsay's been here to film a kitchen nightmare uh, show. Ari Leyendijk has been uh, a feature uh, bachelor on the, uh, the Bachelor and also The Bachelorette. And we've had quite a few homes in Scottsdale featured on HGTV, uh, either in their House Hunters series or Dream Home series. And thanks to the wonderful efforts of uh, Experience Scottsdale, formerly known as the Scottsdale Convention and Visitors Bureau, we've been featured on the Travel Channel and many other travel shows uh, as they've uh, promoted Scottsdale around the United States and the world. Many of our sports events have been uh, shown on TV. Shortly after ESPN went on the air, they came to Scottsdale and filmed the first two Skins games that were played at Desert Highlands, and that featured Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus, Gary, Gary Player, and uh, Tom Watson. Uh, also, when the Phoenix Open moved to uh, the t new TPC golf course and uh, played uh, in 1987 and every year since. We've been on uh, a network television broadcast of that as well as ESPN and the Golf Channel. And in 19, uh, excuse me, in 2008, ESPN set up a broadcast tent right there on the Scottsdale waterfront at Scottsdale Southbridge and broadcast for the week leading up to the Super Bowl that were played in the Valley then. Uh, five different teams that have played spring training here at Scottsdale Stadium have broadcast live during spring training and now customer or excuse me sports fans and potential visitors from Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, Oakland and San Francisco have all seen Scottsdale downtown uh, at Scottsdale Stadium and since Salt River Field opened uh, fans in Colorado and around Phoenix and Arizona have too. Barrett Jackson has been on uh, cable TV and even the Parada del Sol was featured many years ago on the wide world of sports. 
many extras have come from Scottsdale when these have uh, these movies and TV shows have been uh, in the local area. As I mentioned, Janie Ellis was an extra in 26 Men. Some of the local babies tried out to be in Raising Arizona. And uh, a longtime Scottsdale resident and her family, Wendy Springborn and the Springborn family, actually appeared on the, the game show Family Feud. Uh, in 1988, uh, Herb Drinkwater, surrounded by over a hundred residents at Scottsdale in Maine, uh, to celebrate our 100th anniversary of founding, uh, opened the program Good Mar Morning America by all uh, doffing their red Stetsons and saying Good Morning America on that TV show. And in addition to being amateur extras, the Scottsdaleans have also uh, become homegrown movie stars and television stars. The Wonder Woman Linda Carter went to Arcadia High School. Uh, movie actor Nick Nolte also went to Arcadia. And speaking of Arcadia, uh, the uber producer uh, of movies, uh, an Academy Award winning producer, Steven Spielberg, all, Spielberg also went to Arcadia High School. Stuart Margolin, who starred in the Rockford Files and other TV and movie series, uh, went to Scottsdale High School. And comedian and actor David Spade is a graduate of Saguaro High School. And I can go on and on. Many of you may remember children's programs early on. Uh, Romper Room locally starred Scottsdale resident Miss Sherry Finkbein and the national uh, Ding Dong School star Frances Horwich actually retired here and lived here through her death. And of course Wallace and Ladmo, favorite uh, children's stars, were a frequent appearance uh, uh, providers all over Scottsdale at ribbon cuttings and other family events. As I mentioned earlier, ever since uh, Henry uh, Walthall came here in the 1918 time frame to get away from Hollywood, we've been a favorite place for full-time, part-time, and visiting celebrities from Hollywood. Amanda Blake, who played Miss Kitty in Gunsmoke, lived here for many years. Uh, Jane Mansfield visited here to cut the ribbon when the Executive House Arizonian opened uh, in the 1961. And also visiting the Executive House Arizonian in the 1960s was Jack Benny. Uh, Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner got married here and had their wedding reception at the Hotel Valley Ho. Uh, they also came back uh, in later years and ate at the Lulu Bell on Main Street. And in 1993, when Rawhide and Scottsdale hosted an international chili cook-off, Ernest Borgnine of McHale's Navy fame and Robert Mitchum of Winds of War and other movie fame were the uh, two celebrity judges joined by our own Mayor Drinkwater. Other f stars that have lived here include Donna Michi, Buster Crab, Hugh Downs, Merv Griffith, who owned the Scottsdale Hilton for several years, Dennis Hopper, Leslie Nielsen, and on and on. And of course, because we're such a golf mecca, particularly because of the Phoenix Open and its pro-am, we've had stars such as Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, Lawrence Welk, Dean Martin, Bill Murray, and others come here to play in that tournament and others. So let us end by waxing nostalgic about some of our favorite movie theaters where we've seen these locally produced movies and also some of our favorite classics and new movies. Uh, the T-Bar T, as I said, morphed into the Kiva, then in the 1990s became the Cactus Rose Theater for live performances for about a year, uh, then became shops owned by Gilbert Ortega and is now an Australian baker. The Portofino, uh, that adult movie theater across the street on Main Street, became Frontier Town and now is a, a collection of small shops on Main Street.
The Roundup, uh, when it closed, uh, housed the headquarters, uh, that site for paddock pools and is now the Artesia condos. Ford Theater, which was also a small theater on uh, on Scottsdale Road, or excuse me, on Indian School Road, is now the site of one civic center, a city offices. The Kachina Theater, where Cinerama was shown, is now, uh, that site is incorporated into the Scottsdale Galleria Corporate Center. Camelback 1, 2, and 3, perhaps you'll remember, was in the old Camelback Mall on the south side of Camelback Road, and that was torn down in the late 1990s to make way for the Scottsdale waterfront on the north side. Remember the IMAX at the Galleria that uh, became uh, Theater 4301, uh, operated as a live theater uh, in the early 2000s by the Cultural uh, Council. And remember Pla Hayden Plaza East uh, that was near a Woolco, as well as the Camel View uh, that had those iconic mushroom-like concrete structures uh, since its opening in 1973 there on what is now Goldwater Boulevard. Uh, that closed just a few years ago and moved inside Scottsdale Fashion Square and now there's a seafood restaurant uh, located where the Camel View used to be. So we've had so many wonderful places to watch movies and as of to as today we certainly want to give a great big shout out to our own local homegrown movie mogul Dan Harkins who is a graduate of Scottsdale High School and uh, has m operated many uh, wonderful movie theaters in Scottsdale as well as given first jobs to so many teenagers and others in Scottsdale as he operates his movie theaters here around the valley and also around the southwest. If you're interested in more movie history, you may know that the Scottsdale Museum of the West has an awesome collection, the Reynard Strickland Western Movie Poster Collection, and always has some of those posters on display. And also, the, if you're interested in local TV history, there's a House of Broadcasting Museum located on Fifth Avenue. Uh, so those are at least two places where you might uh, get a little bit more TV and local movie history. There are now so many producers of uh, movies and TV shows and programs on everything from YouTube and Facebook to uh, private movie studios throughout Scottsdale that our opportunities to see Scottsdale are endless. But I do hope that you'll join me in giving a great tribute to those past, present, and future movie theater operators, movie producers, and extras and movie stars stars that gravitate to Scottsdale and keep us entertained and informed. So until we can don our masks and keep our social distances in the movie theaters, I hope to see you at the movies and also I hope you enjoy watching some of the movies that I've talked about today.